Welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Anna, and on this channel, I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home into a homestead. Today, we're gonna to be doing two different things. Number one, we're gonna be walking around the garden, we're gonna be tending to it. Uh, we have a lot of things that need to be tied up, suckers that need to be suckered. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then after that, we're gonna be canning up our beans that we left to soak yesterday. So if you are interested in how I like to soak my beans for better gut health, make sure you check out yesterday's video if you haven't already. And then uh, later on in this video, we're gonna can those guys up in two separate, well, technically four separate recipes, but really two. So I was out here in the garden last night, hunting around with a black light because I found some of these nasty guys. I don't know if you can tell how big these are, but they are freaking huge. And they were eating away on my plants. And so I saw them from afar. I saw the damage that they had done to this plant here. Basically just topped it, so it's not gonna grow anymore normally. And I think there's something else I think the cats are climbing up here. Cause these things are like, all the tops are like snapped off. A hornworm is not gonna snap off the tops. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure the cats are out here running around or something else is out here doing, th doing their things. We're gonna sucker these and just kind of tie them up, do some general garden maintenance. And we're starting over here because it's shady over here. <laughs> the sun is already long overtaken the other area. I haven't had the chance to share it with you, but I have harvested a couple of unripe tomatoes. I'm just pulling them when they kind of start to blush because I'm told by most people in the area that I've encountered and seen on YouTube uh, that the critters get them really easily around here. So uh, they, as soon as they start to blush, they just bring them inside and let them ripen. I was just watching a video from my friend Constance over to Good Life Farm. She was making some potato soup. And it looks like all three of my sauerkraut gals have videos out today. So make sure that you guys check them out. It'll be two days from now. Constance from A Good Life Farm, Tangie from Freedom Homestead, and Julie from Row & Co Farms. Uh, they are gonna be keeping me company all day long. I'm about to watch uh, Tangie's Reclaiming the Garden. What is that? That's exactly what I'm doing. And then Julie's Every Bit Counts Challenge. She's doing the Every Bit Counts Challenge too. So make sure you keep track of her. I'll we'll link all three of them down below. I'm so excited. All right, this part of the garden is trimmed and complete. The main part of the garden that I'm concerned with is the cucumbers down there. So we're gonna get those things working, working on those ones. This right here is why I love this. Look at this, every last root chip. It just digs. It gets underneath it and gets all the things out. It's amazing. I'll link this down below. I've told you guys about this one other time. That was probably a month ago. This thing, I cannot get over how amazing it is. It's like the perfect design. It's a great, it just gets underneath everything. Uh, yeah, just a lot to do. We're gonna be pulling out all the corn, the, um, which we're gonna get to the chicken. Look at my baby. I got this row here trellised and weeded. I actually wanna show you something that I did with them, but I'll show you guys a little bit later. It's just too hot and I, it's time for me to go in and edit a video. So I'm gonna save the rest of these for this evening uh, before we get to our canning project. So it's evening. Well, sort of. It's like late afternoon. It's 3.46. In my planning stage of my day, I forgot that I have my live stream tonight. So we're gonna have another late canning night. <laughs> Oh well, life goes on. I'm definitely not gonna leave it in the canner again. So we'll be waiting up for it. Thankfully, it's just one canner load. I don't have to wait and do several. I was out here a little bit ago. I got like five or, I got most of the rows strung up. And then I realized that I wanted to show you guys the gigantic freaking plant of death that I have over there that I need to get rid of. And we're gonna try and experiment with our amazing tool to see if we can get rid of it completely before the seeds go everywhere. All right. Is this on? Is this thing on? Yes, okay. So this is what I'm told is called hogweed, pigweed, something like that. I like to call it the death plant. I, I don't really, I just started doing that now. This thing has horrid thorns 
all over, apparently. Down there. Yeah, there they are. Okay, so I'm gonna try and get this thing out of the ground completely, root and all. I don't know anything about this plant. I only learned about it through Constance, so let's see what we can do here. And I never had these here. These don't exist on my homestead naturally. They came in on compost. Not compost, it's actually soil. But, not happy about that. Ooh, these roots are fierce, aren't they? I love this tool. It's amazing. I don't know anything about the root structure. If you have to get it all, if it'll die if I decapitate the plant, so we're gonna be safe. <laughs> Got it. This is a pretty shallow root structure. I think I did pretty good. All right, time to burn this sucker so these seeds don't take, take hold in my garden. Before I set you guys back up on the perch, I figured I would kind of show you a bit more up close what I'm actually doing. Uh, first thing I'm doing, this is yarn, and I just cut a bunch of lengths of it. It's like arm length, it's maybe a yard. I'd say it's a yard long, a meter, whatever. Uh, and so that's just how I find that it works to kind of trellis these things the way that I want. So you might remember that we had several of these tomatoes die, and I, I planted, or I, I took off some suckers and rooted them successfully, but I never planted them. Welcome to my world. Basically what I'm doing is I'm just, I'm using the natural suckers that are on the plants here, and I'm trellising them where I want them to go. See, this plant is getting split into two, right? And then in some places, I'm actually doing it across. So this plant and that plant are gonna be split off and this one's gonna grow up this trellis, and then this one's gonna cross over, and it's gonna start growing up this trellis. I'm just filling in the gaps with the suckers and trying to train them and trellis them. See this one? This one's gonna go here, and then this one's gonna go here where it died, or that one is gonna come over here. So I hope you're kinda catching my vibe. And I'm also trimming all the suckers that I'm not, all the suckers that I'm not trying to um, to train it going to, to go a different direction. I just cut all the suckers off. So I'm single and or double stemming each plant Hope that makes sense. I'm gonna get back to work So now we're gonna go ahead and start our batch of canning. So the first thing to do is just to rinse off all the beans and rinse them off a couple of times just like we did, did um, earlier. So if you are interested in how I got to this part of the process, you're gonna want to check out yesterday's video where I showed you guys how I soak the beans. But basically we're gonna do exactly the same thing. We're just, we have, let me show you real quick. Okay, ignore the dishes, okay. So you're just gonna take the jar, take a strainer, dump it, fill it, shake it, dump it, fill it, shake it, dump it, voila. You're basically gonna do it until the water's kind of clear. So we're gonna be doing this recipe a little bit different. I am doing technically four different ways of doing beans, but really two. I'm gonna do half of the black beans as just plain black beans and half of the, the pinto beans is just plain pinto beans. And that's, we just, we don't have any on the shelf. So I figured I would go ahead and take advantage of this. And um, just kind of mix it up and get a variety in one canner load. And then the next one I'm actually gonna do, it is Lisa Sutton's chili bean recipe. 
and I'm going to link hers down below. She does it a little bit differently than me. She actually does it dry canning, which is technically considered like a rebel canning method, which I don't have an issue with. It's just my, my stomach does. It is, it's a little bit of extra work and it's a little bit of extra time, but I like it because you can't measure like you can't put because her recipe calls for a half of a cup of beans you can't really measure a half of a cup of beans once they're soaked so it takes maybe an extra 10 minutes each time that you're actually doing this but in my mind it's worth it mostly in in my gut it's worth it i have water coming up to a boil here i have the canner is at the proper water level and just on very low heat and once this comes up to a boil, then we can really continue. So, but in the meantime, let's do this. So her recipe calls for a half of a cup of uh, beans and a half of a cup of tomatoes, diced tomatoes. I don't know if I grabbed enough. Um, she used the smaller cans, but I'm just trying to get rid of these cans because they're not organic and I want to get them off of my shelf and out of the out of the cans into the jars okay let me bring it down here a little bit she says that she just takes the half measuring cup I should get a canning funnel will make this a little less wasteful so we're just gonna put the half a cup in each one since these have soaked pretty much 24 hours we really don't have to be concerned with these raising with these um, expanding really at all, maybe just a, just a hair, but nothing to be overly concerned about. So next ingredient is a measuring spoon set. All right. So now we're going to add our spices. We're going to add in a cumin quarter teaspoon and then a teaspoon of smoked paprika, a teaspoon of onion powder or minced onion a teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of chili powder, half a teaspoon of salt. We've also put a half of a teaspoon in each of the plain bean jars. So now we're just gonna top these all off with water to one inch of headspace. Good little chopstick, and we're just gonna stir these all to debubble them. And that's to get any little air pockets that might be hiding inside of here. You want to get them out so that you'll still have the proper headspace. Now we're gonna go ahead and wipe off all the rims to get any particles that might be on there. We don't really have any grease to cut, but usually that you will. Um, so that's all of these. Get nice clean rims. We open up new jars, so we have our ball lids. We're gonna use these for, for some of them, and the rest of them we're gonna use for jars. And so we'll have a cool comparison. Not to say that I necessarily expect anything, but So we got our, all of our jars in here. We, we checked to make sure we could see through this, made sure this toggled, the gasket is good. And so now we have the heat cranked up to high. And we're gonna let this run until this thing boils up, until this thing heats up. This thing is gonna start spewing steam and then this is gonna pop up. And then about a minute later, this thing will be billowing steam. So that's when we're gonna hit the, um, that's when we're gonna start our 10 minute timer to let it vent. So it'll push out all the air and it'll replace it with steam so that it can actually get up to the proper temp pressure. Once that 10 minute timer goes off, we're gonna put our weight on there. And then um, when that thing starts to kind of sway back and forth uh, correctly, we're gonna set our timer for 75 minutes because these are beans and they're pint sized jars. So, and then once the, once the 75 minute timer uh, goes off, we'll shut it off, 
and <laughs> once the 75 minute timer goes off, we'll shut it off and walk away until it completely cools to the point that this thing drops. And then we'll probably be able to pick it up at that point. I think we'll, I think we'll be back from the live from that point. So we got all the jars out of the canner and it is 10, 10 at night. And I pulled, I pulled them out as soon as the weight dropped on them. It just, you know, it takes some time to actually get them to cool off. If you guys are new around here, we just moved to our 30 acre homestead in Southern Missouri. We're transplants from Washington state. And I'm bringing you guys along to show you or share with you all of the things that we're doing to turn our home into a homestead. And I also like to do, bring you along for all kinds of videos like this one on canning, freezing, dehydrating and fermenting, as well as showing you guys how you can use those for those preserve foods in your everyday cooking. If that sounds awesome to you, make sure you click this button right here. This is the subscribe button. This is what tells YouTube that you want to come back here. Up here is a video that Mr. Google Pants thinks you're going to enjoy. This here is my last Every Bit Counts Challenge playlist or video. And then up here is my videos for the Every Bit Counts Challenge playlist. Make sure you check that one out for all the awesomeness since the beginning of August. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.